Come to the house of the Lord. <laughs> are you glad to be in the land of the free? Hallelujah. We are so glad you are here. If you're watching from Facebook, we welcome you. And we've just come to praise and magnify the name of the Lord. If you would, stand to your feet. And we're just going to lift our voice this morning and just ask him to be with us today. So, Lord, we thank you for this day. God, I thank you for the opportunity to come into your house and to magnify your name and to bless you, my Lord, because you are worthy. So, God, we ask that you come, Holy Spirit. You move in us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Sing a little louder. 
in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises red. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the King is alive. time I gotta hear you sing it out sing a little louder sing a little louder sing a little louder you sound good sing a little louder Woo! <laughs> sing a little louder for me. Hey! Sing a little louder. In the presence of my enemy. Sing a little louder. <laughs> louder than the unbelief. Sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody. Sing a little louder. Heaven comes to fight for me. Sing a little louder. Like I 
the lover of my soul, my lawyer, my confidant, <laughs> my rock on which I stand. You are everything to me. Everything to me you are, God. So I will forever praise and magnify your name. Jesus, Jesus.
than. He's greater than, sis. He's greater than. Tell him again. He's greater than. He's greater than. He's a great, big, wonderful, amazing God. He's greater than. Any storm you'll face. Any negative report from a doctor. <laughs> any lack of finances. He is greater than. He is faithful. Would you bring my grandbaby up here? He's sleeping. For those of you that are watching on Facebook that may not know our story, my grandbaby was born 14 weeks, almost 15 weeks premature. He had no water after 18 weeks. Mom's water broke, and he had no water in the womb for five weeks. Without water, their lungs don't develop. But God, <laughs> greater than, greater than. He's nine months old, five months adjusted, really. They say he's five months old. He's nine months old by his birthday. He's perfect in every single way. No residual effects of anything because a church got on their knees and prayed. They raised a hallelujah in the presence of their enemies. <laughs> And they declared uh, he shall live uh, and not die. Amen. Go ahead and give him a clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's living proof that heaven comes to fight for you. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I'm going to save all of the other stuff the end of the service I want to go ahead and dive into the word of God are you thankful that his presence has met us in a sweet way this morning God is good he's forever faithful I could never thank him enough I got up to sing this morning when I got to church and the enemy thought that he was going to silence me <laughs> but he don't know my God I'm going to talk through the hoarseness and believe that God's going to show up and show out. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning for just a few minutes. The Lord gave me, I need my Bible also, please. The Lord gave me such a sweet word. And I'm going to share it with you to the best of my ability. If you have your Bibles, you can go to 2 Chronicles and just find the scripture there. If not, we're going to have it up on the screen for you. But how many of would you say that 2020 has been a year of <laughs> woo, overwhelming surprises, right? We had declared that 2020 was going to be the year of plenty, plenty, right? And although we have had plenty, plenty of our shares of overwhelming battles, we have had plenty, plenty of the power of God that has seen us and is going to see us through. Can I get an amen? I mean, we went from COVID-19. We've had dust storms. We've had swarms of locusts all over in South Korea. There's been swarms of locusts everywhere. We've had injustices done to our black brothers and sisters just to name a few and now they're projecting a new swine flu but God is forever faithful and he's going to be with us every step of the way and if we're not careful in our walk with Christ when these things pop up they can cause us to become very dismayed, discouraged, disgruntled. And we have to be very strategic in how we approach them. You realize that our words are life and death, amen? And so we have to speak with purpose. We have to declare with purpose the things of the Lord. And so a few, <clears throat> several maybe <clears throat> Tuesday nights ago, when we were having our prayer call, the Lord dropped in my spirit that praise was the weapon. Praise is the weapon to fighting every battle 
every sickness, every disease, every storm, every trial, praise is the weapon. And I could not help but to think of the story of Jehoshaphat. Such a great depiction of the power of God and how he moves and ministers in our life. And so I'm going to read. You want to follow with me? I'm going to read 20. Chapter 20, verses 1 through 7. So after this, the Moabites, the Ammonites, and some of the Meunites came to make war on Jehoshaphat. And some men came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the sea. It is already in Hazazon Tamar. And this is what um, Jehoshaphat, he was alarmed, Jehoshaphat. Resolved to inquire of the Lord. He was alarmed, but he inquired of the Lord. And he proclaimed a fast for all of Judah. And the people of Judah came together to seek him from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in front of the new courtyard and said, O Lord, God of our fathers, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. You know, when you're in the middle of getting some bad news, you have to stand up and declare and remind yourself of who the Lord is in your life. Amen? And that's what Jehoshaphat did. He said, look, God of our fathers... Are you not the God of the heaven? Are you not the God that rules everything? Do you not have a say in everything from A to Z? You rule over the kingdoms of the nation. And the power and might are in your hand. And no one can withstand you. Say no one. No one one can withstand you. No enemy. No attack. No plot. No scheme. No one can withstand you. Oh, our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever? Say forever. Give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend. How many of you love to be called a friend of God? Woo, our friend, our faithful father. All of us experience unexpected battles. The ones that we don't see coming. (laughs) <laughs> the ones that we never thought was going to knock us to our knees. Has anybody been there? Anybody? anybody? I mean, you hear a knock at the door, and you go to the door thinking maybe it's an Amazon Prime package that you ordered, and lo and behold, it's the enemy standing there dropping off something else, right? We get those unexpected ba- packages, them unexpected battles. Jehoshaphat in verse 1 was told that an army was coming against him. He was currently in a season of spiritual renewal. It was a season of high. Everything was going great. Everything was going wonderful. Life couldn't be any better, Sister Ann. And then, bam, you been there? Life is going good, looking good. Everything is in order. You are just making it happen, elder. And then all of a sudden, bam, it comes out of nowhere. Verse 1 and 2. I'm going to read it to you again. After this, the Moabites and the Ammonites and some of the Meunites came to make war on Jehoshaphat. Some men came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the sea. And it is already in Hazazon Tamar. When Jehoshaphat got this news, the vast army was already against him. And many times when we get those battles dropped off in our life and we approach those unexpected things, we do not have time to react. You been there? I mean, you don't have time to do anything but try to pick yourself up off the ground, dust yourself off, and be a little bit presentable, right? That's where Jehoshaphat was. He was told, hey, man, there's a vast army that's coming against you, and they're coming from around the backside. You ever had one come around from the backside that you never seen was coming? I mean, it just brought you to your knees. 
This one was coming from along the backside against the people of God. And at the time, it was only 25 miles away. That ain't very far, y'all. It was only 25 miles away. He had no time to develop a strategy. But when you're walking in the presence of God, (laughs) when the unexpected things come, your strategy is always going to be, let me find me some Jesus, right? Our strategy is always going to be, I mean, we have the ones that stop us in our tracks. We have the storms that slap us upside the head. We have the storms that leave us speechless. But if we know who we are in Jesus Christ, our strategy is always him. Always him. Jehoshaphat knew that his help was going to have to come from the Lord. And isn't it funny how battles seem to bring us back to the very source of who we should have went to in the first place? (laughs) Talking to myself, talking to myself. Too often something happens, Elder Jesse, and we are just, I mean, so quick. That cell phone already lives in our hand, right? So, I mean, we just so quick to dial up, you know, Auntie M and, you know, call this one and call that one and tell them, look, you're not going to believe what in the world has happened to me. Or even sometimes, better yet, we use social media as a platform to put our woes on how woe are me and mine. And we never seem to follow up with that grumbling and complaining. But I know a God who is faithful and righteous that although this has come up from behind, I know that I know that I know that the Lord is going to step in and have my back. It has a way of bringing us to the very source of our help. In verse 3, it says, Jehoshaphat was alarmed, but resolved. Look at your neighbor and tell him, he was alarmed, but resolved. Woo, I love that. I love that. I love that. He knew that he could count on the one who was going to save him. Now, Jehoshaphat, like ourselves, did not always consult, consult God on everything. I mean, all of us would love to think that we were at the spiritual place in our lives where we always went to Jesus about everything all the time and we always had everything covered from A to Z. But the truth be told, sometimes we try to do it alone on our own by ourselves. And Jehoshaphat, in just a couple of chapters earlier, had hooked up with Ahab and they were going to do this thing. And almost got his hind parts killed. Because <laughs> you know what happens when you don't do things God way and you want to do it your own way. You get yourself in a mess sometimes that you can't get yourself out of. And then all trouble breaks loose. I believe this. The Lord spoke this to me as I was studying. He said, there are battles that God has intended for us to win that we lose because we don't have the right mindset. I'm going to say it again. There are battles that God intended for us to win that we lose because of our mindset. Because we're alarmed, but we're not resolved. (laughs) We're alarmed and we're all over the place trying to find anybody and everybody that can, you know, just try to speak a word, do something when we should get on our knees and say, oh God, I'm alarmed, I'm afraid, I don't know how this is going to go, but God, I know that my resolve and my help is in you, my God. And because of our mindset... We get in a world of trouble. We get in a world of trouble. Let's look at verse 6 and 7. Oh, Lord, God of our fathers, are you not the God in heaven? 
You rule over the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. Oh, our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? We've got to look up to heaven and say, oh, my God, you are great and you are mighty. You are faithful. And although I'm seeing a battle I've never seen before, I know that I can put my trust in you because nothing can withstand The Bible says to encourage ourselves in the Lord. He says that because he knows that there was going to be times when we were discouraged and our hearts were downtrodden. And we have to say, oh, my God, are you not the God of heaven and earth? We got to remind ourselves that we have a friend, a forever friend, the Bible says, a forever friend in him. And he is our defender. He is our defender. He fights those battles. As we sang in that song, heaven comes to fight for me. This one may be too big for me, but it's never too big for him. (laughs) He wins every battle. He wins every battle. Look at your neighbor and tell him, he wins every battle. That includes the one you're facing right now. He wins every battle. And the Lord dropped this in my spirit too. And he said, and I never waste one. I never waste one. Never. Every trial and every situation that has happened in your life has happened for a reason and for a purpose. It is to bring you closer to the one who is greater than all things. It is to show you and all the earth to God be the glory for great things he has done. And what happens though is we become alarmed and unresolved And we forget where he's brought us from. We forget when he brought in food when we had nothing on our table. We forget that he was with us in the midnight hour when our babies would not stop crying and we didn't know what to do. We forget that he healed someone of stage four cancer and set them free. We forget. But I'm resolved in my spirit today to let you know that I will never, ever, ever, ever forget what God has done for me. This baby is a constant reminder to me and I hope to our church that all things are possible through God. And when I face something that I feel is bigger than myself, all I have to do is remind myself of who God is and was in his life. And a miracle is nothing short of our Lord and Savior. And if we would have that mentality, Alfonso, if we would always know that we know that we know when the storm comes up and the battle comes from behind and knocks us to our knees, we would immediately say, my God, I know you are fighting for me. And I guarantee you, if we had that mindset, we would see things in our life develop a little bit differently. Jehoshaphat had heard the word from the Lord and although he did not know how God was going to deliver him he was confident that he would let's look at verse 18 no let me look at verse 14 first then the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehazel son of Zechariah and he said listen King Jehoshaphat And all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid. Look at your neighbor and tell them, don't be afraid, sis. Don't be afraid, brother. Don't be afraid. Or discouraged because of this vast army. 
Don't be afraid of this storm that you're facing. Don't be afraid of this sickness you may be battling. For the battle is not yours. The battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow, march down against them. They will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz, and you will find them at the edge of the gorge in the desert of Jeruel. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions and stand firm and see the deliverance the Lord will give you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Oh, he tells them again. Do not be discouraged. Go out and face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. Don't be downtrodden. Don't be brokenhearted. Don't be at your wits' end. You know what I have found during this COVID-19 is many, 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 many people have fell into a dark stage of depression, which is an attack of the enemy. It is nothing but attack of the enemy. He wanted to isolate. He wanted to separate us as the body of Christ because he knows that, that where one are gathered, where two are gathered, where three are gathered... <laughs> Many have fell into a state of depression. People are just, they are just discouraged in their hearts and they're wondering when in the world is this ever going to end? When is things going to get back to normal? When is my life going to ever look like anything that it used to look like? But God is saying, don't be discouraged. Uh, I got you. I'm going to use this for my purpose in your life, in the body of Christ, and in our nation. He wins every battle. He's fighting. And you know, sometimes what happens to us, we fight battles that aren't ours. You let somebody swell up on Facebook and post something up there about some kind of thing that they're going through or something or whatever, and you got about 50 comments of everybody trying to fight that battle for that person. Let me tell you something. Their battle ain't your battle. You got your own mess in your own household to try to worry about than worrying about everybody else's mess and fighting everybody else's battles. Because what happens is when your own battle comes, you ain't got no energy. Because you've been fighting everybody else's mess. God told me, he said, look, this battle ain't yours. This battle is mine. And I've never won, lost one. I win them all. This battle is not yours. But it's mine. Verse 18, Jehoshaphat bowed with his face to the ground and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down and worshiped him before the worship before the Lord. Then some Levites, which were the priests from the Kohatites and the Korabites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel with a very loud voice. Can you give God a shout of praise? They stood up and magnified the name of the Lord with a shout. Knowing that God would deliver them. Although they were in a battle that they did not know how in the world it was going to transform what was going to happen. It did not seem to matter because what they did was what they knew. And that was to fall before the Lord on their face and their knees and give God a shout. That's what we've got to do when our back is against the wall. When we're fighting a battle bigger than us, we should fall on our knees first thing and give God a shout of praise and declare his faithfulness hallelujah verse 20 early in the morning I don't want to get ahead of myself yeah let me go to verse 20 
Early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. And as they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, listen, 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 everybody. You could imagine there was probably some a bunch of rumbling and gumbling and talking and japping and lapping and all of this. They were all, he said, listen, listen, listen. Calm yourself. Listen to me. Judah and people of Jerusalem, have faith. Look at your friend and tell him, have faith. Have faith. And the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in the prophets, and you will be successful. So after consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness. And they went out ahead of the army saying, Give thanks to the Lord. His love endures forever. Hallelujah. He knew that praise was a weapon. He knew that he could magnify the name of the Lord when he did not know anything else. Uh, He did not know how the army was going to attack them. He stood on the promise of God saying that this battle is not yours. Uh, I will fight it for you. And so he said, God, I'm going to give you thanks uh, because your love endures forever. His strength endures forever. His peace endures forever. His power endures forever. His healing, oh, hallelujah, endures forever. Whatever it is that you need to put in that blank, it endures forever. Hallelujah. We must change our focus. And when we do, God wins the fight. God wins the fight. When we move our focus from me, oh, and my God, how this is so unfair, and how I am hurting, and how I am devastated, and how I am broken. And when we can take and flip a switch in our mind and say, oh, my God, your love and faithfulness endures forever. I am a friend of God. He is a friend of mine. He wins. He wins. Hallelujah! He wins. Woo! So they begin to praise the Lord. Let's look at verse 22. As they begin to sing and praise the Lord, he set an ambush against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir who were invaded Judah, and they were defeated. <laughs> they were defeated. He sets up an ambush against our enemies. He wins. He fights. He's awesome. And I want to remind you this morning, Dave, you can come for me. I want to remind you this morning of how awesome our God is, how mighty and faithful he is, how just he is, how much he loves us. But I also want to remind you that you play a role and you play a part in your victory. You can't roll over in the bed and pull the covers up over your head and act like nothing is going on around you and expect that something is just going to come and pop up from somewhere. You are the key to helping yourself in your battle. Your praise needs to be your weapon. Your praise needs to be your weapon. Your praise needs to be your weapon. Don't let the enemy steal that from you. We determined in our mind, and we knew there was nothing we could control with him. There was nothing. There's nothing we could do. It was completely out of our hands, Brother Jesse. But we knew that one thing the enemy could not steal was our joy and our praise. 
So for 123 days, we walked inside that NICU in CHKD, and we declared the goodness and the power of our God. And were the days hard? Yes, they were. Were they grueling? Yes, they were. Did some days we get more bad news than we did good? Yes, we did. But we stood on the promise of God, and we declared that God was going to win and have victory in this life. But that was a conscious decision that we had to make. I can't imagine what would have happened if we would have went in with a mindset every single day, dragging ourselves there, feeling defeated before we ever got there, then be ambushed with all kinds of negative uh, reports all day long. I can't imagine what it does to people who don't have Jesus or have Jesus but haven't yet realized that their praise and their mindset is a weapon. That's why it's so important that not only on Sunday mornings, but throughout your day, you should have time for praise breaks. (laughs) When something happens in my day, I just say, wait a minute, Esther, we got to take a minute and just praise the Lord. And we just begin to thank him and praise him for whatever. I mean, we were in Starbucks line for 20 minutes on Friday. (laughs) We was done supposed to be at work. We done rolled up in there. And the funny thing was, we rolled up in there and the guy at the thing said, "Uh, come on through, ma'am, I know your order. I was like, yikes. So we pulled on up. 20 minutes we waited. And you know what? We could have said, Dad, going at this t- stupid Starbucks has done made me late for my day. I mean, rolling all in this house late. But you know what? We got that Starbucks. We took a sip of it. And we said, thank you, Lord. There must have been something you was trying to delay us for. There must have been some kind of something on the highway that you was trying to protect us from. Because God I ain't going to be mad. I got you and I got my Starbucks. We're going to just roll in 20 minutes late. that's real life but seriously that's how we should be that's how we should be sister Annette we should find times to praise the Lord and when we do that on a regular basis our mind doesn't stay in a state of negativity there's no way it can you can't praise the Lord and stay negative I mean, when you begin to praise the Lord, I mean, that spirit man just begins to rise on up and you just begin to have yourself a time. Our praises were another thing the Lord dropped in my spirit last night. I was hoping I wouldn't forget it. He just brought it to my mind. Thank you, Lord. Our praise speaks to the negativity of our flesh man. And causes the spiritual man to rise above. (laughs) Yes, it does. Our praise, it unlocks so many things. And it's the first thing that the enemy wants to try to silence. It's the first thing he wants to try to silence is our praise. So I want you to stand to your feet this morning all over this building. We can't bring you up and we can't lay hands on you and we can't pray for you that way. But I am going to pray and believe God exactly where you are. That whatever battle you're facing in your life, that you are going to see victory. You're going to praise your way through. You're going to praise your way through. You're going to declare unto the Lord, God, I know who you are. And I know that you are mighty. And so, God, I ask for every individual that is in this room and those that are watching on Facebook, God, that you would go to their rescue. God, I know that you're greater than any storm. You're greater than any enemy. You're greater than any financial downfall. You're greater than cancer. You're greater than depression. You're greater than oppression. You're greater than any addiction, my God. And, Lord, I pray. That their praise would unlock their victory, my Lord. I pray, God, that you would help them to refocus their mind, oh God, not on the trouble, not on the battle, not on what was, but what is to come, God. You are greater. You are mightier. And you win every battle. 
Help them to fight with praise. Help them to fight with praise. Help them to have the first thing that they would do was to fall on their face and declare, give thanks to the Lord because your love endures forever. Jesus, be with everyone, my God, I pray. Move in every situation, move in every circumstance, my God. Oh, Jesus. Encourage, uplift, my God. Speak your peace, speak your words, speak your love. Jesus, Jesus. And we will never, ever, ever fail to give you the praise, the honor, the glory. For you are worthy of it all. Worthy of it all. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you give him a clap of praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead and praise him for the thing you're believing him for. <laughs> Go ahead and magnify him as if he's already done it. <laughs> yeah, God, we bless your name. You are worthy, my God. We lift you up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when God does it for you, I want you to go tell everybody that you can of the goodness and faithfulness of your God. Help them to believe in the one that you know is greater than. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. You can go ahead and give it this time now if you want to do your text to give, if you want to pay online, if you would like to use the kiosk in the back. To our Facebook watchers, you know that you can use those platforms as well. Cash App is another one that you can use. They will put that down in the comments uh, for you to be able to easily access. We want to let you know that Bishop and First Lady are traveling home today. Bishop and First Lady, if you're watching, we love you. We adore you. We are so thankful that we've been able to see and witness that you've had a wonderful time of refreshing with your family. And we're so grateful for that. Pray for their protection as they travel home today. Their children are traveling home as well with them. And so pray that they have safe travels and get back safe and sound. Tuesday night, we will have our prayer call. And I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. I want you to listen to me. When this first pandemic happened, we were having 35, 30, 35 people on that call. This past week, we had six people. But I'm going to let you know that although the numbers were few, the power of God was mighty. And he met with us in a passionate and real way. And I want to encourage you, don't fall into the trap. Don't fall into the trap of just being complacent. Don't fall into the trap of this is just the mundane. This is just the same old, same old. Because I'm going to tell you, you never know what you're going to miss on a Tuesday night prayer call. Because God shows up and he speaks and he moves and he ministers. And so I want to encourage you. Don't let the enemy try to get you distracted and find other things for you to do. Because prayer, along with praise, is the key. Amen. So call in on that Tuesday night at 715, 715. Call in for that. And we have a wonderful time sharing and praying with one another. We want to tell you Wednesday night is uh, our Bible study at Bishop's home this week. We'll be at Bishop's at 715. So make sure you tune in for that. And then um, I don't know if Esther has went outside. Is Candace, is there a power zone call this week? If there's a power zone call this week at 7 o'clock on Friday night, Friday or Thursday? Thursday night. So um, everybody take note of that. If you're on Facebook watching, if you're in here, 7 o'clock on Thursday night. The weekends are a little bit crazy, so they're going to try to switch things up a little bit. And so we want to make sure that we pray. I want to let you know for all of those who have been on our Tuesday night prayer calls that Jackie Hess... Um, which is Hans Hess' wife that has been battling cancer that we have been praying for for several weeks now, did go be with Jesus on Thursday morning. And so um, that is the church that Jason, Jason is interning at. Um, he's there this morning. And so we want to pray for them. Um, I believe they're having a service for her on Friday night. They're burying her up where her family lives um, on Thursday, I believe. And so we need to pray for Pastor Hans 
He's trying to lead a church, and he's in a battle. Amen? He is in a battle, but we want to lift him up and let him know that we're praying for him, we're believing for him. They just had a precious grandbaby born, I think, about a week or so ago, um, and they have two daughters, so we want to make sure that we lift them up in prayer this week, call their names out before God, that God would minister to them. We also had an urgent call come in last night about a baby that's in the NICU, and they said, we need the prayers of you and your church, Cohen Strong. You remember our Cohen Strong bracelets? They made an impact in that NICU, and they are calling, asking us to pray and believe for a family and for a baby that is in a desperate situation. And so we want to remember them in prayer. God's used that battle. God's used that battle. He's used that battle to, to bring people to realize that God is greater. And he is seeing that. And so we're just thankful for the opportunity that he's given us to be able to witness to people at CHKD. And so I know there may be other needs. If there are, we're going to just go ahead and take a moment. Does anybody have one? They want to just speak out and we'll pray before we close. Sister Michelle. Okay. All right. We're going to believe God for a good report. Amen. For a good report, Sister Annette. Yes, yes, many of you might not know, but her niece has um, the COVID. Yes, we will do that. Um, there, I don't know if some of you may not have heard, but their son-in-law, David, which is the one who got baptized up here spontaneously, who raised his hands and praised the Lord. He was in a horrific accident um, and... Thankfully, though, Brother James told us this morning that God has been hearing the prayers of our church, and he is doing remarkably well considering what he has been through. And so we want to just continue to believe that God's going to completely restore him back and for her two precious daughters. So let's just take these knees to the Lord. Lord, we just want to come to you in faith, believing and knowing, oh God, that you do all things well. And Lord, we want to thank you for the report that we've got back from David, God, that you are restoring to him, God, the things that the enemy has tried to steal from him. And God, we pray that you would just complete the work within that body, God, as he goes through uh, physical therapy. Lord, that you would strengthen his limbs, you would strengthen his mindset, you would strengthen his spirit, oh God and you would move and minister miraculously in his life for her two daughters, God, that are pregnant. God, we pray that you would be with these mothers, be with these unborn babies, oh God. See them to full term, oh God, healthy in the mighty name of Jesus. We lift up Monica, who is battling COVID, God, this morning, and we declare health in the name of Jesus. We declare that she is whole, oh God. Lord, that you would move and you would minister, you would clear those lungs, oh God, and you would make her, oh Lord, restored by your power. God, we pray for Sister Michelle this morning and her need, God. You are greater, God. You are greater. And we are believing for the report of the Lord. And the report of the Lord says we are whole and we are well in Jesus' name. And we stand on that promise, my God. We lift up this baby and this family to you that is in the NICU, God. And we declare that you are going to make all things well. We ask, oh God, that you would give peace. You would give comfort. You would give strength. You would give hope. <laughs> hope. Let hope arise, oh God, in the midst of the darkness, Lord. Encourage their spirits, my God. Let them find you, O oh Lord, in this as their stable confidant, O oh God, the solid rock on which they can stand. O oh God, raise that baby, O oh Lord, completely whole in you, God. Move and minister in its life. We want to lift up the Hans family to you this morning, God, as they are suffering this devastating loss. And God, I just pray that your comfort, your peace, oh God, would overtake them these next days and weeks and months ahead. I pray that you would minister to Pastor Hans as he goes, God, to, to, to lead a church, oh God, and that you would be with him, oh Lord. And he would sense you in every step and every word and every action that he takes, oh God. He would know that he was surrounded by an army that is battling and fighting for him and lifting him up in the face of this situation, God, this death. 
Lord, I ask that you would bless our going out this today, God, that you would minister to us, O oh Lord, that we would speak your praise forever on our lips wherever we go, O oh Lord, and that you would use us as your instruments, O oh God, to speak to a lost world. We thank you. We praise you. We give you honor in all things. In Jesus' name. We also want to lift up our bishop and first lady and their family that are traveling. Oh, God, that you would protect them, guide them, lead them, keep them free from any harm. Oh, Lord, let them get back home safely and sound. And we thank you, oh, God, in your sweet name. Amen. Amen. We do have our food distribution immediately following the service, so we ask that you do go out quickly and get that so they won't be tied up for too long. Stand to your feet, and we're going to say praise the Lord on the count of three. And be dismissed. God is good all the time. Amen. One, two, three. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen.